Sarah's computer had been running slow for weeks. At least that's what the help desk ticket said when it landed on my screen that Tuesday morning. I grabbed my coffee and headed to the third floor, expecting the usual culprits. Too many browser tabs, outdated software, maybe a virus from opening the wrong email attachment. When I got to her desk, Sarah seemed nervous. More nervous than someone should be about a slow computer. She kept glancing at the screen, then back at me, like she was afraid of what I might find. I chalked it up to normal anxiety. People get weird when IT looks through their stuff. I started running diagnostics. Everything looked normal on the surface. Her desktop was impressively organized. Color-coded folders, minimal icons, nothing out of place. But the bandwidth usage told a different story. Something was constantly pulling data in the background, eating up resources. That's when I noticed it. A browser window tucked away, minimized so far down the taskbar. You'd never see it unless you were specifically looking. I clicked it open without thinking much of it. What I saw made my blood run cold. It was a live video feed. Not a movie, not a show. A real-time security camera pointed at an apartment building hallway. I could see someone walking their dog past the camera. Another person checking their mailbox. The timestamp showed it was happening right now, and the address overlay indicated it was somewhere local. I stood there for a moment, trying to make sense of it. Maybe it was some kind of neighborhood watch thing, but then why would it be slowing down her work computer? Why hide it? Sarah noticed I'd stopped moving. When she looked at her screen and saw what I'd found, the color drained from her face. She tried to laugh it off. Just keeping an eye on a friend's place, she said. No big deal. But I'd already opened the browser history. This wasn't casual. She'd been accessing this feed for months. Multiple times a day, every single day. There were bookmarks for different camera angles, all of the same building. I found folders full of screenshots, organized by date. I asked her directly whose apartment building this was. That's what she broke down. The whole story came spilling out between sobs. Her ex-boyfriend, Marcus, had ended things almost a year ago. It hadn't been pretty. There were arguments, accusations, the kind of breakup that leaves scars. Marcus had moved to this new apartment to get away from the situation. Fresh start, new neighborhood, the works. But Sarah couldn't let go. She dated someone years ago who worked for the property management company that handled Marcus's building. She still had his old login credentials saved somewhere. On a desperate night, about eight months back, she tried them on a whim. They still work. The property management system gave her access to every security camera in the building. She could watch the lobby, the hallways, even the parking garage. She couldn't see inside his apartment, but she could see everything else. When he left for work, when he came home, who visited him, how long they stayed. She'd been documenting all of it. The screenshots weren't random. They were evidence of a surveillance operation she'd been running from her work computer. Photos of Marcus with friends. Photos of him with women. She'd built this entire database of his life without him having any idea. I just needed to know he was okay. She kept saying, I just needed closure. But this wasn't about closure. This was about control, about not being able to accept that someone had moved on. Sarah begged me not to report it. She promised she'd delete everything immediately, never access those cameras again. She knew it was wrong, she said. She just couldn't help herself. Please don't tell anyone. I'll lose everything. I wanted to feel sympathetic. Breakups are hard. I get that. But this crossed every line imaginable. Marcus had no idea he was being watched. He moved to feel safe to start over, and his privacy was being violated every single day. And my company's equipment was being used to commit what was essentially a crime. I told Sarah I needed to think about it, but I'd already made my decision. I spent the rest of that afternoon documenting everything. Every screenshot, every login timestamp, the entire digital trail of what she'd been doing. Then I took it all to my supervisor. The next few days were tense. I heard through the office grapevine that HR had called Sarah in for a meeting. Security was involved. By the end of the week, she was gone. Her desk cleared out, her access revoked, just empty space where she used to sit. I later found out they contacted Marcus to let him know what had happened. The property management company changed all their security credentials and upgraded their systems.